This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. But it looks really suitable for children. Individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a safe experience playing this game. For content warnings, please visit. By playing Doki Doki Literature Club, you agree that you were at least 13 years of age and you consent to your exposure of highly disturbing content. What am I getting into? What is this disturbing? I feel like I'm watching Barney. Guys, let me ask you a question. Have you ever took a drink of something and then you realize it's not what you thought you were drinking and it's the most shocking feeling in the world? Well, welcome to Doki Doki Literature Club. Literature, literature club, I, I can say that. I know English. Don't do drugs. I have a feeling that's exactly what we're gonna experience. I've been hearing from everyone in the entire world that this game is life-changing. You play it, you will not be the same after you come out of it. And, uh, you know, it's been a while since we played a, uh, anime visual novel. I used to play them a lot in the beginning of my channel, so... It'll be an experience. Hope you guys enjoy it. My name's Scrub. Hi. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. I think I gotta take my jacket off for this one. Oh, and we got coffee. There's nothing like coffee and anime in the morning. Hey! I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori. Of course, Sayori is always doing that. My neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you, you never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. So we're the responsible ones, and she's not. Okay. But if she's going to chase me, uh, chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalks and let Sayori catch up to me. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> that was appropriate, right? I mean, I should be a voice actor. I overslept again. Freaking Sayori, you're a deadbeat. You're never gonna go anywhere in life. But I caught you this time. Maybe, but only I because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh. <laughs> you say that like you're thinking about ignoring me. Stoop. Stoop, senpai. So this is Osada, we're senpai. I mean, that's, come on. I mean, we're, we always gotta relate it, right? Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. That's uh, pretty, pretty reasonable. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean if you, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Scrub Pie, have you decided on a club to join yet? Well, I think it's gonna be the Doki Doki Literature Club. I don't know, I'm just, just a guess. A club? I already told you, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Uh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure this uh, that's possible I did. Okay, it's lagging. Okay. I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. I know the feeling. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just by getting on uh, average while spending my free time on games and anime. God, so relatable. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried about that you don't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Okay, so yeah, so Sayori is a piece of the crap, but we're an otaku weeb. Okay. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. A neat is basically just like a shut-in, as far as I know. Like, you know, you know they're, that's what they call otakus and stuff, and it's kind of... I don't know, stereotypical, but whatever. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself uh, relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. All right. Hey, <laughs> this is a good game. Alright, uh, there's no problems here. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. I mean, if it's there, why wouldn't you join it? Actually, I, uh, uh, here we go. Little story time real quick before we continue. I promise I won't take much of your time. I joined the anime club in my high school back 2010 or whatever. I don't remember. 2009, 2010. And, uh, I felt like I didn't fit in there. Everyone was really loud and obnoxious and annoying. And I'm a huge anime fan, so... I mean, I can see why maybe. I don't know. This is Japan, though. People seem to- People in Japan are more uniform. They're more 
not crazy. So maybe it was just my school. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the one, only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you sitting there spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you so late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know, you know what? Well, that you could come to my club. There's no way I'm going to your club. Uh, meaty? Sayori is vice president at the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member, and uh, Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make any promises you can't keep, stupid Sayori. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all this out. I let a long sigh. Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Oh, yay, let's go! This is a, f a wholesome, family-friendly game, and I don't get it. So far. Hello. I think I might stay. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, scrub pie, what a nice surprise. Oh, these all seem like nice girls. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. <laughs> Woo! -hoo. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Sorry. God, what a, what a nice first impression. Natsuki? Hmm. <laughs> The girl with a sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is the one I don't recognize, the secondary girl. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also one who made cupcakes according to Sayori. Oh, she makes cupcakes. She can't be that secondary. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says the quiet says uh, that quietly into my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yori, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that, Baka. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with the people with the people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, oh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Scrub Pie. Hey, don't be blushy. Hey, why are you guys blushy? This is a harem. This is gonna be one of those kinds of things. Pe people said in the reviews that it is like, do not play it. Like, you know those things that like say, oh, you know, just for laughs, it's like a little bit of violence here and there. No, this game is horrible. It's horrible. Don't let your children play this. Monocles. Mon <laughs> what? Wait, can, what did I just say? Monocles. When you're using drugs, you're only cheating yourself out of the chance to find out who you really can be. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, and athletic. Basically, complete, completely out of my league. Okay. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You too, Monica. Come sit down, Scrub Pie. We made room for you at the table. So you can sit next to me or Monica. Is this- When do I have to choose? I'm pretty sure we get to choose some stuff. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Uh, sorry. I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? I mean, this seems like a pretty great, uh, experience so far. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Oh, I spit. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Woohoo! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like a little cat's. It's just so cute. Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouthful uh, and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. She likes us clearly and wants to know if we like her cooking. Alright. I see. It's gonna be one of those kinds of anime games. I know. I've been a, I've been around the rodeo a few times. Is that what they say? This isn't my first trip to the DMV. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I haven't I heard this somewhere before. Made them for you or anything? <laughs> Sundari confirms. I thought you technically did. Sayori said. Well, maybe Ibaka, but not for you. You know, you dummy. All right, all right. I give up on Natsuki's word logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers give us permission. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Th that's not insulted. Yuri looks away. I mean, that, you, you know? I believe you. Why is everyone so nervous? Chill out, you girls, okay? I, I swear, I'm just an otaku. So what made you consider the literature? 
Literature Club. Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make, sure we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Why is this game supposed to be a horror game? I'm still trying to figure it out. Wait, at what point? They can't, like, throw you off like this. Right, everyone? Yeah. Well, let's do our best. You know it. Everyone's enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard to find these three. Maybe that's why they're all so delighted by the idea of a, a new member joining. Yep, that would make sense. So, Scrub Pie, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? <laughs> I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki had suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. She loves manga! She, she's a weep? She's a weep just like me? Okay, hey, well maybe I can get into that, okay? Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after Yuri's uh, sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the trim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is uh, equally impressive. Yuri goes on, uh, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. I like, I mean, I love manga. I really do love manga and stuff, but I really like, um, I'm into self-help books. Like, that's the kind of stuff I'm into, like, learning. I like learning things, like, you know, about myself and... And, I don't know, the stuff I'm really into. What about you guys? Do you like books down below? Let me know. And what kind of books do you like? I would really like to know. I mean, that's that's the kind of beauty of playing these visual novels. Is that I really get to talk to you guys a lot about cool stuff. And, uh, it's been a while. Oh, I accidentally skipped it, but she said, I, I like a lot of things. Story with deep, uh, oh my god, no. No. This matches what they said in the game. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. I think I'm starting to make the connection of why this game is going to be trippy. This is the literature club. Are we gonna like transport into some book or something? Okay, let's keep on going. Isn't it amazing how a writer can be so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you off for a loop like this game's gonna do? <laughs> oh my god, I don't want to do this no more. I'm gonna shut this game down before it's too late. <laughs> anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Oh, I have, isn't that a coincidence? Ah, I read horror. I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I could relate to at the minimum level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Okay, it's 100 and million, oh, it's 110 million degrees in here, so I gotta turn on my fan, okay? Really, I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you, I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the worlds, if only for a brief moment. Ah, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of paper behind uh, the last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud. And gives, uh, give that back. Fine, fine. Your cupcakes, your poems. Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sayori slides up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! She is though, okay? Natsuki, you write your own poems. Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think it's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No! Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Oh, that's not a very confident writer yet. Or... Like whatever, she's not confident. I don't, I, didn't th I don't think I read that right, okay. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that love of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard sharing something personal with you. Like, if you're an artist, it's hard to share your work. If you make videos, it's hard to share your videos with other people that you know. Um, you know, stuff like that. I get it. It used to be really hard for me, uh, especially in the beginning, but it just really takes repetition and just kind of getting numb to the feeling of sharing with people. And it's nice when you actually get some positive feedback. You must be willing to open up to your readers, expose Exposing your uh, vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Ah, I wanted to read everyone's poems. Well, we all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them to each other. 
That way everyone is even. That's actually a good idea. I was thinking the same thing in my head. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have new member, I think it'll get us all a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. That sounds like a great idea. Hello? My name is Sam from Travel Promotions, and I want to scam you, and I want you to think that you're getting a, a trip to the to Fiji, and I'm going to scam you. Enough of your crap! All right, moving on. So he's questioning whether or not he'll be actually happy doing this, because he likes the girls. He likes the cute girls. He doesn't like Literature Club as much, but maybe we will learn to like it, okay? All right, so we're going to write our poem. I can't wait to see what we write. Oh, hey, do we actually get to write it? How cool is that? Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen. Oh, okay. So we get to kind of pick the girls. Ah, ah, okay. Uh, cute. Okay, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Oh my god, suicide. Okay, that would obviously be her. I don't know which one I should go for, though. Maybe we should go with the horror girl. Can we go back? I don't think we can. I, I feel like this is going to heavily influence the story. Death. Wait, why is that her? <laughs> Cry. Oh no, I don't want her. Lollipop. Sparkle. No, stop uh, hopping. Explode. Massacre. <laughs> Cheeks. Melancholy. Disown. So I'm kind. See, I'm kind of like I don't want to go to her side. I definitely want to go to the creepy side because I feel like like I really want to know what that's all about. Okay. Contamination. Unending. Doki doki. <laughs> I have to put- I have to pick it. It's the name of the game. Ribbon? Agonizing. Misfortune. No! Frightening. Strawberry? Okay, I- I- I did a mix. I don't really know. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked you a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's short- it's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. I think I would like legit like the literature club man I wish I would have known this stuff about me when I was younger. How is this girl accidentally being so cute? Uh, she picked out a good she picked out a book that she thinks I'll like despite me not reading much Yuri Thank you. I'll definitely read this enthusiastically. I take the book phew well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think I'm really curious to talk to Yuri for a little bit So I guess we're going on more on the side of Yuri, which is what I wanted um, I kind of wanted to go with, uh, what's-her-face? I can't remember the pink one. <laughs> I'm so bad with names, seriously, when it comes to anime especially. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distraction from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent me. More on that, uh, it seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. <laughs> She's like, I see you looking. So she looked, she, she noticed that I was looking and she uh, hides her face in the book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh. It's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so that's the book you gave me, right? I wanted to read some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious how come you have two copies of the same book. Aww, she went out and bought one just for little scrub pie? Aw, okay. Alright, alright. I start to like you a little more. That's not what I meant. I mean, I just pretended to buy two of them. Or happened. <laughs> ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon, and we better. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. I say that all the time about the anime Steins Gate. I, like, if there's one anime I could recommend to everyone in the world is Steins Gate. Because it's exactly probably what I'm gonna experience in this visual novel. So it's a very relatable story. Okay, is that so? What's it about anyway? Well, hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright, I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give away anything. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her lost young sister. But as soon as she does, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately uh, choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationship and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of dark, isn't it? You already made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so so that dark turn- Oh, so that dark turn came out of nowhere. Exactly what this go freaking novel's gonna be. Uh-huh. Yuri uh, gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Scrub Pie? No, it's it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri's into, into these things. She's so sad and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. That's usually how it is for most people. It's just that these kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a new, a new perspective. That's what she said earlier. Uh, when horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they want to believe in. Yeah, that's actually Actually, I, I, I can relate to that too. Um, in fact, that's why I've always liked Naruto because like even that or, or other animes that have bad guys in it because 
they're bad guys, but you can also understand why they're doing the things they do, even if they're not particularly right. So yeah, I think I think I understand. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be naive for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm uh, yeah, that's exactly what I just said. I I'm actually glad I picked her. I, like, you guys can already see that I'm relating to her already. Oh, so we're gonna sit next to her, and uh, I skip into the ne seat next to hers. Ah, yeah, are you sure? Yeah, you seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to, it's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you. Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company, as if I could feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing, maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. There's something, and I think this is kind of the whole concept of let's plays, reactions, and everything like that, that is so, like, it's so fun to experience things with other people, and that's, yeah, that's exactly why the things that I do, like, YouTube videos are, are a thing, because you get to experience what we experience, and that's exactly why I like doing these visual novels. Okay, I'm thirsty, I need some water. Once we each lean a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold open the, the book. Ah, I guess that makes it kind of dif uh, difficult to turn the page. Here. Oh, she turns it, Oh. Why am I clapping? <laughs> I don't know why. This is so cute. I am thoroughly enjoying this game already. And we haven't even got to the good part. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together. Woohoo! It's kind of uh, distracting. As uh, if I could feel her warmth, uh, the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Uh, to turn the page? Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I think I got a little bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again, and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. So each time we turn the page, it feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go over the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. It's a good I, I like the writing in this game. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a critique on writing or anything, but it seems good. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. I know where this is going. She's the- she's the per- she's the person who wrote this. <gasps> I'm so bad at ruining stories because I usually am pretty good at guessing what's gonna happen, but that's what I think. I'm sorry. I can't keep it. In. How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. Oh god, we gotta stay away from her. But she also second guesses all the things that she says, and she does. Like, she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything. They're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I see. Oh god. Oh god. Yuri remains silent. But scrub pie, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. <laughs> that's so embarrassing for you to think that. Wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I mean it's kinda cute. Oh, gosh. Oh, what are you saying all of a sudden? Okay, everyone, just settle down. No PDA here. Okay, okay, now we're gonna share our poems. Alright. Oh, we do get to pick. Well, we're wait, uh, let's go with Yuri, okay? Because we're already doing that, right? As she reads the poem, her eyes lighten up. Exceptional. What? What? Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth and uh, ends up covering her whole face. Uh, he's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. That's, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicate you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. I find myself relating to this so bad because, okay, I mean, I've never wrote poetry or anything like that, but in history class, um, I, I'm not particularly fond of history, but all the papers in high school that I have to have to write for history, my, uh, teacher always said he liked them a lot, like, like, I don't know if he was just being nice to me, but he seemed to really, really like them, and I remember how much of a good feeling that made me, like, it really made me feel good. I did not like school, okay? Alright, I was like an overweight... Kid listens to MCR, loves anime, you know, only plays video games. That was legit me. All right, so like I, that's why I say I can really, really relate to this. Okay, here we go. Oh man, her her handwriting is very nice. Ghost under the lights, the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing, and it must be this one, the last remaining sheet street light to have withstood the test of time, the last yet to. Be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing, air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. What? 
See, now poems aren't my thing, but I can try to decipher this. I don't know, to me, it just sounds like she's a ghost, and uh, she's living in the past, and she uh, is stuck in the past. Okay, she doesn't want to go to the future. So I get out of it. I probably am missing the whole point. <laughs> also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it's really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Oh, not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easily to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all. Uh, okay, I obviously- I obviously relate to our, our character way too much. I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all, but remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiments- or experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. Yeah, that's right. So it's symbolic compared to a ghost lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. So I got that part right, okay. And soon to be left with nothing. And that's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of it that way. That's impressive. You know, I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm gonna keep doing my best for you, Scrub Pie. Ah, me too. Alright, so let's, re let's read hers. <laughs> oh, it's so, it's so simple. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. <laughs> it's so cute. It's, it's so cute. Now this clearly, this clearly is the deepest of poems there is, okay? Actually, I like it. I like it a lot because basically it, it talks about how we're separated from animals. And um, we are totally separated from animals. Like, because, I mean, animals, I don't know. They, they seem to have a more of a, of a, a, a directive. Um, things that they want to do you know they, they survive right that's what they do they survive so monkeys can climb that's what they do crickets can leap that's what they do but all people can do is try and that's true that's all we can do is try if we we'll get things done we don't have an exact thing that we can do humans can do all sorts of things and try kind of goes over all of that but that's about it <laughs> it's actually a good one so it's so it's called eagles can fly i wonder why it's called eagles can fly yeah i told you that you weren't gonna like it i like it what i actually do like it just to be honest it's like so cute uh why are you so convinced that i wouldn't like it well because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff so people don't even take my writing seriously but isn't the point of poems for people to poems to, for people to practice <laughs> what is going on Express them breaking his helps. Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you to do great- Okay, here, here it is. Here's the poem. Here's the, what it means. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it all flat on purpose. <laughs> That's true, I liked it, I really did. It really helps bring out the feeling in the last line, so you did. I guess more went into that than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Okay, let's show it to, um, I just, I guess, Sayori. Let's see Sayori's. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish you away a rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> ah, that's good. That's good writing. It's uh, so sophisticated. Sayori, this is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? <laughs> no? Hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes? A noisy neighbor. Hello, neighbor. <laughs> An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peered inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reeled, blind them, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas already scorched with the paint. Oh my god, do we stare at the sun? Already scorched with the permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. Oh, we have to scroll down here. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in, I was looking out. And he, on the other hand, was looking in. Oh, that makes me feel right here. Actually, I really like this poem. Matt, why am I enjoying this game so much? Uh, okay. 
So, let me give my take on this, okay? So, there's a hole in the wall, or whatever. And it's not really about a hole in the wall, uh, but it, it's symbolism, okay? The hole in the wall is, is, uh, their outlook on life. That's, that's what it is, okay? And it's what you see inside of the hole is, was the outlook on life. So, basically, she, uh, assuming she's, like, the main character or whatever, she wants more, okay? She, she's, she's in the inside looking out, okay? L just bear with me. She looks. At outside from inside to outside and sees the infinite possibilities meaning like what she can do in life I guess and now that she's seen that she has a permanent copy of that meeting or I don't know why it says meaningless maybe I'm wrong but she has a permanent copy of that those possibilities and because it's burning to her eye it's there forever and she will never be able to take that out okay so basically she's optimistic it was just a little hole it wasn't too bright it was too deep too deep because there's too many possibilities Stretching forever into everything a hole of infinite choices. It says it right there. I realized that I wasn't looking in I was looking out because when you look out it's it's symbolizing the world everything and he on the other side I guess the boyfriend or maybe it's, I'm thinking a boyfriend was looking in so they see completely different I see I like that. I like that. Okay. What was the inspiration uh, behind this one? Well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently It's been influencing my poems a bit an epiphany yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is, uh, better friends. Anyway. Oh! Okay, so she had an epiphany and her boyfriend, she's got a boyfriend, alright? And obviously, they already explained that she's popular, so obviously she's, like, she, she sees infinite possibilities because she has lots of choices in her life. And, uh, her boyfriend does not. Wow. The music stopped. Okay, I was kind of skipping through because I felt like it was really unimportant, but basically they were arguing about their poems. She obviously, uh, Natsuki, or, yeah, well, Natsuki, no, not Natsuki. Yuri obviously thinks her writing style is really good. She said that she spent years developing her writing style, and Natsuki was like, hey, I have some suggestions, and she's like, I won't take it because I've been doing this for so long. And, uh, yeah, she had suggestions for her, too. And Natsuki was all like, if I wanted suggestions, I would have asked you for suggestions because she obviously feels like she's really, you know, Talented, I guess. Yuri's like, and Scrub, I like my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? And I think something about is about to go down. Well, I don't know. The music stopped and I'm scared. Uh, oh, that was it? I thought something crazy was gonna happen. <laughs> so, she got caught. She likes us. That's not what I, uh, you were just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just being jealous that Scrub Pie appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? So they're just arguing and stuff, okay. You know, I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Scrub Pie started showing up. <laughs> oh, this is bad. Natsuki! Oh, everyone's fighting. Alright, again, we're walking home. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Uh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki, does that kind of thing happen often? No. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise, uh, I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. You know, Scrub Pie, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club, but I think seeing you get, uh, get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. Oh, okay. Are we already writing another poem? Well, we're gonna go full Yuri, okay? I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one that we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, uh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Ah, uh, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Uh, yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thank you very much. So she feels better when she has tea when she reads. Not to mention, uh, for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf and a kind of uh, filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and almost fetches an electric uh, kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll get some water. Okay, so we're making some tea. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Okay, so we're helping her. Oh, she's like, <laughs> you know, making tea is kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's Monica, please mind your own business for once. Oh my god, you reset that! Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Scrub Pie in club activities? Huh? My mouth gapes. I I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Then let's go, Scrub Pie. Dang, we freaking told her. She's getting defensive. She clearly likes us. I mean, I, it's not a it's not a coinkidink anymore. Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Oh, so she's mad, okay. She suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri, I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? 
No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it also is not right for Monica to judge people like that. Scrub Pie, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Well, because nothing that you do as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. Well, we have emotions and we can't always hide them away, uh, right away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, um, Yuri lifts her head. Scrub Pie, I really like being friends with you. Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help her feel better. Anyway, yeah. Uh, shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Aw, oh, she, she, she's actually making an effort to express herself more. That's what she's saying right here. Turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. Ah, so she's getting really comfortable with us. Okay, I like this. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Oh, I didn't realize that. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because of my- Oh, is it? <laughs> you better stop there, okay? We're gonna keep this family friendly. Your posture, right? <laughs> yes, that's it. She's almost getting too comfortable with us. Oh, so we're even closer this time. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus? So we're like trying not to touch her and stuff? It's just making it really hard for us to read. Okay. Okay, so she's holding the book. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so I don't have a hard time reading, uh, reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it on my mouth. So we're trying to eat too. But then I take another chocolate and I hold it to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. So we're feeding her. <laughs> I can't stop there. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. <laughs> she closes her lips over it. Uh? Yuri's expression suddenly <laughs> breaks. Did I just... So she didn't even know she was doing it. Scrub pie? Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's... Well... You were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? <laughs> I mean, not really in this kind of context, but yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Then you don't need to stop or anything. Ooh -hoo! Okay. <laughs> Situation has gotten really tense. So now she can't focus. Okay. Oh my god. Whew. Oh, now she's now she's staring at me. How did it come to this? <laughs> I notice her chest rising and falling into the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Uh like before, Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it into her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone. <laughs> yeah, stop there. Guys, I don't want to make this episode too long, and I don't think there's any- I, Like, it'll be hours long. But I just- I sure- rest assured that this game is going to be pretty crazy, alright? So, I guess we're gonna stop it there. I really wish I could have made it longer. Um, I'll- I'll try to have, uh, Gauncy, um, cut out as much as- as- as possible that's not really necessary to the story. Um, but yeah, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this because I do, um, it's, it's so nice to just kick back and really enjoy a game every once in a while because, like, too often, I, I kind of worry too much about whether something's gonna do good in views, but I just really want to establish this connection with you, and I feel like, you know, it, it's really hard, it's really hard to balance that it, it, when it comes to doing YouTube. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed, if you did, if you loved, if you loved it, because I did. So I did a poll actually asking you guys if you would like me to play this, and a lot of you guys actually said yes, and so, Masaki Gura and Scrub of the Day, I recommend it because if you like horrors, especially psychological horrors, it may look so innocent, but if you go further, well, you'll probably see. <laughs> That's why I want to play it more, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode if you want to be scrub of the day be sure to drop a like on the video especially if you want more and uh leave comments follow me on twitter if you haven't already and i'll see you scrubs in the next one bye guys